I've had a lot of comments on my videos over the last few weeks, couple of months now, geez, with the Frankie de Jong situation saying, Sam, why is Frankie de Jong not considering legal action against Barcelona? Why doesn't he sue the club? Get his money that way. The deferred wages that they are right now not willing to pay. And I've stayed clear of that situation. But Gary Neville was now tweeted. He has said that Frankie de Jong should be considering legal action. I want to take a look at what Gary Neville had to say. And I think it's about time we had that conversation. Uh, I've, I've not been avoiding it. I've been waiting for the right time to have that conversation. And now feels like that time. Please watch the whole video. Please listen. And also then please leave your comments after the video. But let's talk about it. And as I said, let's talk about Gary Neville's tweet. This is what he said right this afternoon. He said that De Jong should be considering legal action versus Barcelona and all players should be behind him. A club spending fortunes on new players whilst not paying the ones they have under contract their full money is immoral and a breach. Thief Pro should be all over bullying like this and stop. And I know for a lot of you, that's something, as I said, that so many of you have been saying in the comments, why can't Frankie just sue Barcelona? So what I'm going to try and do is, is take... A full look at the facts of everything we know, because the key word here is facts. And then we can have a conversation about it, because it's not just as simple as saying that. It's not just as simple as Gary Neville saying, ah, oh, take lingual action, and yeah, case dismissed. Case done. Easy. Because if we, if, we, if we go to what we know, we know that United and Barcelona have agreed that fee. 85 million euros, 75 million up front, 10 million on top. We know full well that Frankie de Jong has no intention and has never had any intention of taking a pay cut his priority is always to stay at barcelona and see out that contract we know full well that javi oh yeah i love you frankie absolutely love you but you know mm. yeah economic situation financial fair play aka we're gonna sell you if we get the right money and you <laughs> please just leave and the fourth part we know of course is that john laporta Ah, uh, well, you can't actually trust the word that comes out of this, this guy's mouth. He said, we received some offers for Frankie. We didn't know, didn't accept right now. We need to clarify some of the situation with, of course, Frankie de Jong himself. And it's created this situation where no one really knows what's going on. But in terms of the facts of Frankie de Jong's contract, and of course, this is exactly what Gary Neville is speaking about here when he's saying considering legal action. Because Frankie de Jong extended his contract with Barcelona back in, I believe, 2020 october 2020 the details of the contract down here he's extended his contract until june 2026 with a buyout of 400 million euros at so many goals he scored games he's played blah 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 that we absolutely know and the thing is this it's all down to the deferred wages but basically what we're seeing is barcelona taking advantage of the fact that they know Frankie de Jong's dream club is Barcelona. They know, and this is what, Bar this is what uh, Frankie de Jong said, and I believe the last interview he's given where he discussed this topic. In the world, it seems another one, Manchester United, are very interested in you. Are you flattered by that level of interest in you when you were already at a great club? No, you're always flattered when, when teams show interest in you as a player, but uh, what you say, I think I'm at the biggest club in the world at the moment. I feel fine there, so... Uh, no news. No news. No news indeed. That was Frankie de Jong speaking when he was away on an international break with Holland before this really turned into a bit of a saga. But at that point, it was like de Jong to United was this like pipe dream transfer. But again, we're speaking of facts here. You've got Barcelona. And that, again, th this isn't a fact. This is, this is my opinion. I feel that Barcelona are taking advantage of that. And in terms of the, the, the contract, I've run through this in quite a lot of detail in terms of what... The money is, that was the pay cut that he took, a 10% pay cut that every Barcelona player took, and the pay cut down to 3 million from 14 the year after, and then down to 9 million in that year. What we don't know is whether those pay cuts were agreed as part of this contract extension in October 2020, because the coronavirus had already kicked off by then. The pay cut, the first pay cut, this one here, that had already happened. So by the time that contract, by the time this contract was signed in October 2020, these terms should have been written down. So Gary Neville was completely right when he says here that it's completely immoral. We all know that. I've been arguing that for a long time. I think you can see that. 
Everything that Barcelona has done for a long while has been immoral. But whether or not it's illegal depends on what was written into this contract. But I'll be honest, if his agent didn't get that written down in legal terms, then he is an absolutely abysmal agent. So it should be down. But the thing here about Barcelona, and this is the important thing I think to understand, is that they've got precedent. What Barcelona are doing this summer is completely immoral. But they've done it before. And they've won before. Let's rewind even only one year when Gerard Piquet took a substantial pay cut at Barcelona and that allowed them to register Memphis Depay's new signing, Eric Garcia's new signings. Uh, that's the only reason they were able to register those players. Does that strike a bit of a parallel with what you think is happening this summer when all of a sudden, instead of signing Memphis Depay and Eric Garcia, they've signed Robert Lewandowski and Rafinha and Christensen and Kessie on a free. And they can't register them until somebody, hmm, maybe, hmm, I'm not sure, hmm, takes a pay cut, hmm. They've got precedent. They've done it before. Now, Gerard Piquet had to actually come out and, uh, and, and because there was some, there were certain journalists that saying he didn't take a pay cut and he's actually on 450 grand a week. So he actually put a bit of his uh, payslip up there. If I ever get a payslip like that, ah, uh, I'm not going to ever get a payslip like that. But uh, that's not one month. I think that was for half the year. And Barcelona released a statement saying, oh, yeah, don't be rude to our players. But this is Barcelona we're talking about. The club that had to let Messi leave because they couldn't afford to put him on their wage bill. This is a club that right now is trying to, as I say, character assassination of, of the nicest guy I can see in football. A guy who they know full well, absolutely full well, loves Barcelona. It is his dream club. And they're trying to take advantage of it in the same way that they maybe did. Gerard Piquet said yes. Maybe they didn't take advantage. That was his decision to help the club. And it allowed them to register new players. And they are trying to do the same thing again this summer. But they are not getting anywhere. Now, in terms of what I think is an interesting parallel and conversation to have when speaking about this Frankie de Jong situation is to talk about this man. Now, 10 points if you know who this man is from that photo. Bosman. John Mark Bosman was a player who played for, I think it was Standard Liège. Anyway, the club that he played for is slightly irrelevant. The conversation around him isn't. Because Bosman was under contract, I think it was at Standard Liège. Anyway, he was at contract to his club and his, and his contract expired. He then wanted to move to another club, uh, but I, th I think it was Standard Liège. Uh, then, despite his contract finishing and expiring, they tried to charge €500,000. The club who was going to sign him said, no, we can't afford that. He was then forced to take a 75% wage cut to stay at the club that he was trying to leave. What happened? The Bosman ruling came in. He went to the European Court of Justice and argued for the fact that he should be able to freely move inside the European Union. And it changed rulings altogether, legally, in football. The Bosman ruling came into effect in 1995 and it's been used ever since. Players, when their contracts expire, are therefore free to move to whatever club they want to because they are not under contract anymore. I don't really understand how that didn't exist before it, because if a contract expires, surely the players... Anyway, it didn't exist before then, and he was one that changed that. Now, with this Frankie de Jong situation, I would say because, because this is not the first time they've, they've tried this, because the Gerard Piquet situation was a... Um, what well, That was the precedent. I may, maybe it happened before Gerard Piquet. Let me know in the comments. Maybe it did happen before Gerard Piquet, but I know it happened with Gerard Piquet. And they are trying to do the same thing now with... Frankie de Jong. So they are trying to take advantage of the same way that they took advantage of it last time. But Frankie de Jong is taking a stand. And that's probably why Gary Neville is coming out and saying, look, he needs to be considering taking legal action. As I said, the fact of whether he can take that legal action depends on the terms of this contract extension that happened in October 2020. And if his agent was doing his job properly, his agent would have got these terms all written down on paper so that even though the money technically is not owed to Frankie de Jong until these years that Barcelona are still contractually obliged to them because of the contract that he signed prior to that I'll be interested to know where you stand on this and I thought it was a I, you know I, mean, I, I normally only do one video a day uh, one live video and then one video in the afternoon but I feel like this is a really big talking point I feel like this is something something that a lot of United fans have been speaking about for a while it's not as simple as Gary Neville might put it there in the idea that you can just take legal action. It's whether or not he has the legal standing there. And as I say, I think the fact that there's 
This is not the precedent. This is not the first time that Barcelona have done this. And it might probably not be the last time that they do this. Overspending and then asking players to take wage cuts in order for them to continue that overspending. I'll be interested to know where you stand on this. And also from a legal standpoint, I suppose we won't know really. We, won't, we can't know the, the, the terms of that contract. So this will continue to rumble on. But I felt like we should have a conversation here. And because it's such a, I would argue, quite a, quite a confusing thing. Uh, talking about legal action is very, very simple on the surface. But because Gary Neville has brought it to the attention now of a lot of United fans, I felt I wanted to do a video on it. You can let me know what you think in the comments below. So many of you keep having a go at me for talking about Frankie de Jong. But I feel like this conversation is necessary. It really is. And I don't know. The fact that, the fact that Frankie de Jong is so steadfast and the fact that he's not going to be taking that wage cut in the same way that Gerard Piquet took that wage cut, it kind of shows me that I feel like they're confident enough that they do have that legal standpoint. But again, that's just assumption. I'll be interested to know what you think about this in the, in the comments. And no doubt you'll let me know. Take it easy. Make sure you subscribe if you're new. And you did enjoy the video. If you didn't, well, there's no point subscribing.